Recent studies show that the share of nonprofit leaders of color has remained at less than 20% for the past several years. As more nonprofit CEOs and executive directors retire, though, there's an opportunity to close that racial leadership gap. I'm joined now by two nonprofit leaders who are working to develop and support other leaders of color. Alondra Bulger is executive director of COACT Detroit, and Omari Rush is executive director of Culture Source. Welcome to American Black Journal. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, tell me what it is that, uh, that you guys are doing to close this, this racial gap. Sure. So COAC Detroit is a hub for nonprofit organizations. Yeah. Um, we received initial investment from the Ralph C. Wilson Jr. Foundation um, and we're launched as an initiative of Tech Town mm -hmm. um, with the idea of creating a more connected and resilient nonprofit community. Um, we do that through three ways. The first is that we have a beautiful 6,500 square foot space in the new center community I've in Detroit. Seen it. <laughs> yep. uh, and so there's a lot of opportunity for nonprofits to connect to knowledge, resources, and each other in that space. Mm -hmm. But we also lift up what's happening um, and what's working well in our region and nationally. Um, and so part of that includes looking at um, fellowships across the country mm -hmm. that lift up leaders of color uh, and other types of programming. We also try to meet nonprofits and nonprofit leaders where they are, so that includes tailoring our programming to their specific needs. Yeah. Um, one way that we're doing that is through the Activate Fund. So we have a $1.5 million fund um, that supports nonprofit capacity building, but it's based upon research done by a number of our partners. So there is a um, report called Building a Network that was recently completed. That report um, does two things. One, it looks at nonprofit leadership and capacity building through a social justice lens. Mm -hmm. And it also looks at it through the process of strengthening not only the organizations, but also the connectivity of the sector itself. Mm -hmm. And so through that fund, we are looking at um, providing programming that um, includes courageous conversations, right? Uh, particularly not just with leaders of color, but also women of color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, uh, talk about the, that number, less than 20%. Uh, 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 leaders of, of, of color. That's that's pretty astonishing, actually, I think, in a city like Detroit. Um, uh, why is it so bad? Well, the, the jobs are tricky jobs, yeah. you know, and they're only getting more complex as the environment is changing. And it reflects a real need for there to be supports. Mm -hmm. um, supports from the board, supports from a board that really understands um, what the current dynamics are of leading an organization that's willing to be flexible in um, an executive's approach. Mm -hmm. um, things don't look like they used to, <laughs> you know, 30 years ago. And, um, and a board has to be ready to kind of get behind a leader and, um, and support them in their style and their way of doing things. Yeah. And so that's one part of it. Um, and another part of it is just some basic training around um, what it takes to run a nonprofit organization, uh, which at times feels like a for-profit, uh -huh. at times feels like it's filling in basic government services gaps. Yeah, it is, right? And, um, and those kind of skills are things that get built over um, a developing professional's kind of academic uh, career as well as their early professional career. And so um, that number is low because there always isn't the kind of pipeline of training sure. and pipeline of kind of supports. And that number can grow if we start to target more of our kind of resources and efforts toward helping that. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about the role of Culture Source here. So yes, Culture Source is a regional coalition mm -hmm. of about 150 nonprofit arts and culture organizations. Uh, we are, you know, we exist to help organizations thrive and flourish as solid organizations that are relevant to their committee, that co community, that um, are sustainable and that just thrive and flourish. Uh, we do this mostly through um, a set of professional development experiences. We do it through a set of kind of demonstration projects where we ourselves will um, produce events that point toward different kinds of futures yeah. for the arts and the way they exist in communities. And we do this through just being solid advocates for, um, for the needs and possibilities and opportunities of arts and culture and communities. Yeah. You know, it, it strikes me that uh, for a lot of young people, <clears throat> even uh, young people who might imagine themselves as leaders in the, the private sector or even in government, the idea of being a, <clears throat> a leader in the nonprofit space might not 
uh, easily occur to them. And, and more to the point, it might not occur that you need kind of a different skill set and, and set of experiences to be able uh, to do that. I mean, part of the challenge here seems just planting that seed in their minds early enough. Yeah, I think it. I mean, I think it's twofold, right? There's the mm -hmm. there's the need to build a pipeline mm -hmm. of talent, right, um, to show what's possible in the nonprofit sector. I mean, frankly, the nonprofit se sector employs a huge number of folks, both yeah. locally and nationally. Right. And so, I think part of it is even unearthing what the possibilities can be. The opportunities are vast. I mean, you can be an executive director. But you can also, if you're interested in communications, you can do something in that space, right. you know. And nonprofits uh, lead so much diverse types of work mm -hmm. that you really do have quite a few options. Yeah, yeah. And the beautiful thing about the field is that we get to, uh, you know, we're all about kind of a public good mm -hmm. and a public service at the core of what we do. And we get to talk to people about that and, and um, inspire people to dip into their wallets or use their own skills to help us out in this public benefit work. And so, you know, the more that we can um, be good role models, mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we certainly do is we're very mindful about who we lift up as examples, who we um, present as experts. Sure. Um, because we just want to point to a wide variety of, um, of looks of people, you know? Um, we want to um, people to just be able to see themselves in, um, you know, people that they see as leaders, yeah. so. Yeah. Uh, so tell me what we would expect to see and when out of, uh, out of this effort. Sure. I mean, I think there are two things that are happening um, right now that I would call out that our partners are leading. Um, the first would be new nonprofit enterprises at work out of Ann Arbor just launched their first cohort of leaders of color. Mm -hmm. um, also, in our space on September 11th, we'll be holding an information session uh, for a program that IFF is, is kicking off for um, organizations that are in the community development space mm -hmm. uh, for leaders of color or particularly leaders that are serving communities of color. So when you when you think about who's closest to the problem, uh, you know they're also closest to the solution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this fall, we're bringing in uh, Koya Leadership Partners, an executive search firm, to do a series of uh, half week of events, six events that are fo focused on um, talent recruitment, leadership development. Um, they are particularly skilled at. Um, reaching beyond the most obvious candidates and um, and helping organizations realize that this is the person that they want, even yeah. though that person um, may not be someone who has represented a traditional leader for that organization. So we'll be doing that. Those events will be open to the public. Um, and we also have a program that we're running um, in second year uh, with the Ann Arbor Area Community Foundation that's uh, called Culture Makers, where it's about taking a set of leaders of color and working with them in artistic ways to reimagine what the word culture means, yeah. really uh -huh. empowering them around that, and, um, and then having um, what they come up with be a real kind of uh, guiding light for our organization. So, um, you know, working both sides of the, of the coin um, is a strategy that we're really excited about. Yeah, okay, well, very important work uh, when you look at the landscape of leadership uh, in this sector here in the city. Congratulations and thanks for being here. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah.